What's up, beautiful people? It's another episode of Some Dumb Gaijin with your host, this guy, JJ. So today I just wanted to talk to you about some great things going around in the comedy world and some horrible things going around in the Japanese comedy world. So which should we start with, the good or the bad? I guess we'll start with the bad. So recently in the news, there was a comedian that just got uh, slammed for slamming girls, and by that I mean in the butt, right? In the uh, bathroom stalls, well, he's just cheating on his wife. So I don't know about many of you that if you know anything about Japan, but in Japan we have something called a love hotel, which uh, sounds nicer than what it is. It's basically a scummy, uh, used and abused hotel where people go to bang girls because why not, right? You don't want to bring them back to your own house and you don't want to bring them back to your own house, if, especially if you have like a family, like Japanese young people under 20. Actually, Japanese people live till they're like 24 with their parents, so Japanese people under 24, I guess, uh, don't want to bring their girlfriends or whatever back, so they bang them in what these, they call love hotels. But anyway, so this Japanese comedian ignored the rules of Japan and he was taking girls and banging them in the handicap washroom. Now, for those of you that don't know, the handicap washrooms are very large. I mean, I don't know about the rest of the world, but in Japan they're very large because uh, they have to be able to, well, bring a wheelchair in there. And of course, people bring their babies in there too to change the diapers or whatever. So that kind of makes it even more bad. This guy is bringing all these girls and just banging them in public washrooms. And he's rich and he's famous and he has a wife. So he made the news and he's not making his agency look very good. And uh, he's not making the handicapped people that happy. But it does beg the question, do handicapped people bang in the handicapped washrooms? Only they would know. And uh, this comes to weird news because, <laughs> oh, I love my podcast. All my 16 listeners probably do too, right? But anyways, yeah, handicapped people bang, so they got to bang somewhere. <laughs> but anyways, so this all came with big shock and he's apologizing and doing all this stuff. But uh, just last year, we had two girl, girl, I believe, I believe they were both girls. Two girl comedians that were from the Japanese company Watanabe Pro. And they got in trouble because they were making fun of, fun of Naomi Osaka, who's a famous half black, half Japanese tennis player. And they were saying that uh, she should get more burnt or use more like whitening cream or something because she's too dark. Anyway, something along those lines that was super racist. And those comedians apologized, but nothing really happened. And then Yoshimoto came under fire because a bunch of their guys were dealing with the Yakuza and all this shit. So basically, Japanese comedy is not in a good light right now. And I mean, even if it wasn't, right now Japanese comedy is kind of dead. I was talking to my friends the other day too, and I was just like, you know, I liked Japanese TV shows like uh, Shimura Ken and Gotsue Kanji and Gaki no Tsukai and this really like fun, upbeat... And that's part of the reason why I did Manzai and I wanted to become a Japanese comedian. Is because comedy was so... It was just so raw and unique here in Japan. And now with censorship or how they're dealing with TV or just basically, I don't know, the amount of interesting comedians, Japanese comedy is just plummeting. And the creativity seems to be drying up and it's just becoming variety shows and food shows with like eating and... Uh, Quiz shows, yeah. Like 90% of Japanese TV is now quiz shows. It's like, dude, we just have to pick up a book. We don't need to learn from TV. And it's just poor management. So, unfortunately, Japanese TV, like I said in one of the other videos somewhere I made on YouTube, is dying. And uh, they're letting that boat sink without a fight. It's really sad. And that's why now, I mean, I'm just doing stand-up comedy. And now stand-up comedy and... Sketch comedy in the West is just going amazing. So just uh, a little while ago, Saturday Night Live, SNL, just came out with a sketch with Eminem. And it was parroting the, parroting the Eminem uh, stand music video. But it was about Christmas. And 
damn, I laughed so hard on that. It was so good. And uh, I was just like, man, Saturday Night Live is coming back. They're kicking ass. I mean, coming back for the last couple of years, they've just been doing amazing. And uh, being in Japan, it kind of sucks because I can't see it, right? And of course, all the Saturday Night Live uh, videos on YouTube are blocked in Japan. So I'm like, damn, I need to be in this. And then Corona hit, so now everything's fucked up, right? But man, like comedy in the West just seems to be flourishing right now. I'm listening to Joe Rogan and Bill Burr and Bobby Lee and Bert all talk about like comedy now in the West and how we can't do like... Uh, stand-up shows in the West, but we can do drive-in stand-up shows. And I was like, man, with Corona, they should just bring back drive-in movies. I've been saying it since Corona started, and supposedly they are, which is awesome. But now we have drive-in comedy shows? Like, that's just awesome. And hearing Bill Burr talk about it, where it's like, uh, you can't really, like, feed off the audience or tell what the audience is thinking or... I don't, I, th I think he said he couldn't even hear them laughing to judge like if the material is working or not. But then he's like, then you get used to it and you get a feel to it and then it just seems normal again. And I'm like, that's really cool. I wish I was there to try that. But luckily for me in English comedy in Japan, we're fine. I just did a, a show yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. And I was shaking off a hangover this morning. <laughs> so if I'm a little slower than usual, that's because I got a bunch of bells chiming off in my head. And uh, yeah, the show went great, except for someone bombing and clearing out all the, all the customers. But I had fun. That's all that matters. And I basically had to yell through the bar to the outside to get people's attention to come in. And I just saw like, all these people poking their head inside, like, who the fuck is yelling over there? And I was like, me, get the fuck in here, man. I'm doing a show. And I mean, it's not the other comedian's fault, but they need that raw, powerful aggression. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's weird. I'm inviting people to the shows. Other people are inviting the shows. And some people just don't invite anyone. And they just go there to say the same bit a hundred times. And I'm like, dude, there is no comedy scene in Japan, really. But you know, I try, I try, and that's what it is. And then I think in April, if Corona is better, I'm gonna go back to Canada and do some stand up in Canada for a bit until taking the plunge and going all the way down to New York or California and uh, put all my fish in one barrel because I'm gonna kick shit into gear and get some comedy going and get my flows going and just kill it. I mean, that's a lot of confidence flowing from me, but hey, you need that shit. Don't say I'm cocky. Because I think it was Kid Rock that said, you think I'm cocky, but you know what? It ain't cocky if you back it up. And that's what it's all about. And that's what it's all about. Bum, bum. <laughs> Don't judge me. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, Andrew Schultz is putting out a Netflix special. Hell yeah! Andrew Schultz, if you don't know, is a YouTuber with over a million followers. He's super funny. He doesn't cut any corners and he speaks the truth with his comedy. I wish I was as smart as Andrew Schultz when it came to politics and cultural references, but once he sprays them, I get a hold of that and I'm learning as well. And he is phenomenal. He is an amazing comic, and I hope to see more of him, and I can't wait till his special gets released on Netflix. I believe it's December 17th. I could be wrong, but I believe it's December 17th. So, December 17th, 2020, check it out on Netflix. He will be ripping it up. And, um, what else did I want to talk about? There's just been so much crazy stuff during Corona that it's insane. Like, I find myself just, like, checking the news in the morning and at night, which I hate doing because I hate the news. It's all negative. But I got to, like, figure out the numbers of corona. Like, how many people are infected today? Should I be going outside? Should I be staying inside? I mean, at any point, I probably shouldn't be going to stand-up comedy events. Especially since one comedian actually got sick from corona and, uh... 
Yeah. I guess he didn't come to the stand-up when he was sick with corona, because I don't think any of us else have it. But, uh, yeah, he came back on Friday, and it was just like, everyone's like, e are you sure you're done with corona? Like, we don't want any of that, man. And, uh, yeah, he seems better, I guess. But uh, hearing that he got it, and now that's the first person I think that I met that had corona. And, uh, yeah, you kind of get worried, right? Like, even if, even if you can cure it, which I think pretty much if you're young and you're taking vitamins and you're not obese and you don't have diabetes, then uh, you're fine with corona, I think. But you still don't want it. It's like an STD. You want to be like, yeah, I got, I got a VD once. It's not something cool you want to go and tell people. Yeah, I got corona once. It was kind of harsh for a day. It's like, no, man, you were infected with some crazy shit. You don't got to be going around telling people that. You don't want that. You don't die from a cold either, but you don't want a cold. That's a day you miss out on your life. So that's just my point of view. I just don't, I don't want to do Corona. I don't want Corona at all, man. Um, I want like some weird new super virus that turns you into a superhero. And then, yeah, I get infected with that. <laughs> what if, and this is where the some dumb gaijin gets really some dumb gaijin. What if. There was an STD that gave you superpowers. Where did I think of this shit? Would you get the STD? Like, <laughs> see, there was one, like, crack whore in the back street of, like, New York. And she was... <laughs> and somehow, somehow she came out with, like, an infection. And it gave you, like... Uh, Superman powers, which you just like, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just thinking of like some fucking hooker with like cum crust all around her mouth, that, that, uh, you know, cause they don't have showers, they're poor, right? <laughs> so like, you're like number 5,000 in this line and you're like, uh, how bad do you want those Superman powers? <laughs> Would you, would you take them? Would you man up? I don't even know. If could you say man up to that? Oh, but yeah. What if you could get any superpower you wanted, but you had to go behind that back alley in New York and bang this cum crusted hooker in the back alley. And then, and then, you, and then, you know, she jacks up the price too, right? So like half her teeth are missing and she has those like meth scabs on her face she's picking all the time. So she has like a half Freddy Krueger face, <laughs> the crusted cum around her lips. And she's like, yeah, that'll be uh, $5,000 for a suck up. <laughs> Would you do it for the powers? Would you do it for the powers? That's uh, that's a mind bender right there. <laughs> but uh. If I was maybe in the top 100, I'd probably do it. That's one time you'd probably get infected for a just cause. <laughs> what a topic. But talking about superheroes, man, the boys, if you go on Akasan's channel, my buddy Akasan, we did reactions to the boys, the Amazon Prime really badass superhero show. And it was pretty funny because we came up with this idea I think I came up with the idea and I was just like, what would you do with superpowers? And I was like, like if you, or no, they asked me, they were like, what would you do JJ if you had the power of invincibility, invisibility, not invincibility, invisibility. And I was like, I don't know, but I'd probably go do some mischief. Like, I don't know, go watch someone changing. No, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. Cancel culture. Screw off. I didn't say that. Fuck off. But I mean, I'd probably go like invisible and like walk around while people didn't know just to test it out, right? And they're like, oh my God, how could you do that? And I was like, you don't think Superman, if Superman was real, he would be testing out his shit? I bet you a thousand bucks. If Superman was real in Japan, it was like a Japanese guy, he'd be using that laser vision to heat up cup ramen for like five days or something. I bet you Superman does that too. Superman probably doesn't cook. He's just like frying eggs and making scrambled eggs with heat vision, like, pew! 
you know, you use your powers. Of course you do. NHK guy comes to your door, you just turn invisible and walk out, and you're just like, fuck this guy. Again, I don't want to have this conversation. But, like, I was like, dude, like, they would be doing the craziest shit. Like, Superman can't have sex. If he had sex, he'd fucking kill the girl. One slight thrust to the hips and the gr it, girl's freaking flying to Uranus. I didn't mean to say Uranus, but there's a joke there, but it's meh. But, um, yeah, in Flash, I was like, dude, if I was the Flash, I would be seeing how fast I can bang while not failing and, like, coming in under a minute. Like, if you could bang a girl for, like, five minutes as a Flash, she could probably come, like, 50 times. He was like, but I tell you, man, that's what people would be doing. And that's kind of what the boys kind of represented, right? But anyway, so Akasan and our buddy DC son, or Dante from the Soft Bank commercials, if you didn't know, is just like, they're both like, no, dude, that would be wrong. No one would do that. Superman wouldn't do that. And uh, my boys in the comments section was like, dude, no, JJ's right. It's human nature. If you had this much power, you would be destroying and abusing the hell out of it. Like, I mean, Trump or Biden, I wouldn't have any of them as my leaders if I was damn Superman. I'd be like, you know what? You do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. Don't get in my way. That does sound super villainish, but it's not super villainish. It's just like piss off. I, I'm going to run my own world now. New world order. <laughs> But um, yeah, I just thought that was kind of trippy. So what do you, all, what did all you guys think? Um, if you could be any superhero, who would you be? Would you go to the back alley of New York to get your powers? And would you abuse the shit out of those powers? That is the question of the month, of the century, of 2021. I'm predicting that is the question of the year. And uh, in other news, I've just been at home pondering what to do next with Corona because creativity is so limited. But then again, it's great to have my podcast back. I love just talking, even if it's 16 of you listening, which by the way it isn't, it's like 200 or something, which is nice. But even if it was just 16 of you listening, that means that 16 of you give a crap about my life. So then uh, I don't need to put a gun in my head and be like, oh, fuck Corona, fuck this shit. And actually, I shouldn't even be joking about that because someone was saying that suicides in Japan are up more than deaths from Corona. Now that's fucked up. And I mean, it is Corona still causing the suicides, I'm sure. But uh, there's a lot of depressed people in Japan, actually. And actually, all around the world, people, spousal abuse is going up, child abuse is going up. People just don't like being inside. That's kind of why, like, the gaming industry is kind of shocking me, right? Everyone's doing Twitch. Everyone's doing this. Everyone's doing YouTube. Truth be told, I kind of want to stop my reactions on YouTube because, one, I'm a comedian and I don't want to do that shit. But, two, because... Ugh. Yeah, a lot of the people doing reactions are retards, I guess. I shouldn't say that. That's mean, but it's the truth. And uh, I don't know. I don't like being inside. Same with being in Japan. If I was getting like a TV show or something, I want to be doing like an adventure TV show. I love going for adventures. When I did this one job in Japan being like a traveling substitute teacher, I took the job just so I could travel. They paid for my car. Well, they didn't pay for my car, but they gave me a free car. They gave me a free place to stay. And I went all over Japan. And then whenever I had a weekend and I only worked like five hours a day, every day I had no friends or nothing, so I just traveled the whole day. I felt like a fucking Dragon Ball character swinging through the trees with my monkey tail. I was just loving it. But uh, without, without traveling and living in Tokyo, like that's why I just got to get out of Tokyo, man. Living in Tokyo, it's like, where are you going to travel to? What are you going to do? I mean, sure, you can go in the mountains and you can hike for a bit. But it's just not the same. There's no adventure there. Being a comedian is amazing that you get to go to different countries and perform, let alone different cities. So um, I'm really pumped to actually go back to Canada and start doing improv in Canada. And then, uh, yeah, start my new chapter, maybe be in uh, California. But 
first we need Corona to heal, man! And we have no clue when that's going to be. They say that the vaccines are out, and I hope the vaccines are out. But uh, it comes down to that question, uh, if you would go and bang a hooker in the back of a New York alley to fix Corona. Would you do it? See, let's just say again that uh, if you did it, you would heal the whole world of Corona. If you could heal the whole world of Corona, and you were number 5,055, and she's too poor to get an STD check. But it's for the way, it's for the sake of the world. It's for the sake of the world. Would you do it? If you said no, all the deaths are on you. All the deaths are on you. And I'm not saying yes, but I'm not saying no. <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, I want to do an hour, but, you know, props to Bill Burr. I don't think I could talk for an hour. Um, unless I'm, like, reading the newspaper or something. But I don't think that I'm that famous enough that you guys would care or listen to me for an hour reading the newspaper. So we're going to end it there. We had some fizz... Fizzle? No. See, now I'm forgetting English. I lived in Japan so long. We had some deep questions. And... We went over a lot of stuff in comedy. Um, with these podcasts, if you're watching on YouTube, which unfortunately I'm sitting down and it's, I don't know, I think it's great. But uh, if you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys are thinking. If you're listening on iTunes, Spotify, Anchor, or any of those great, wonderful freaking platforms, then uh, have, a second li have a second listen. Just listen another time for my sweet angelic voice. You know I do narration in Japan, so... This voice gets paid. And uh, yeah, support me. Good things are coming. When I come back to Canada, I'm thinking to start a podcast either with my crazy cousin or my badass bro, Sean, who is doing amazing on his YouTube channel, which you should check out. And that is The Storytell Now, where he busts through the mountains and the glacier lakes and pass, passes the native Indian land to see the real Can Canada, Canada. Canada. <laughs> and uh, it's just amazing. He has drone footage and it's just, wow, I did not know Canada was that beautiful. So I might even come back and be a cameraman for his show. And uh, then maybe we can start a podcast because me and Sean are like the A-team. We're a comedian and a rapper and full of stories and adventure. Canadian rappers, full of, whatever. There's something there. But anyways, yeah. Uh... Good things are coming. I am full of hope, but being locked in this concrete jungle and thinking of, just imagine going back to Canada, I'm full of hope and excitement. So, pray for JJ. No, I'm joking. Hopefully Corona's all over, but thank you guys for watching. That's another episode of Some Dumb Gaijin. And I am JJ. Love you, beautiful bastards and bitches. And see you next time. Peace. Pew, pew.